Hey everyone, my name is Megan and welcome back to What's Your Why. I am really excited about tonight's interview. It's with the absolute legend that is Jer Redmond. Recording this interview was so, so, so special to do. Jer has lived such a complex life. Right from when he was a kid all the way till now, he's been faced with so many obstacles, but every time one has been put in front of him, this man has just smashed right through them. And the attitude that he's come out with is phenomenal. Like a few years ago, Jerry was sentenced to two years in prison. And since leaving prison, his life has just turned around and he's now a pro athlete. Just listening to his why, I think it's one that every single one of us could do a hearing because he's come from nothing and he's made so much of himself. Like I say with every interview that I post, if you feel like it's too much, you don't have to watch it. If you feel like you need a little bit of support afterwards, check out our Instagram and there's a little highlight on the page that says support. Yeah, so my name's Jerry Redmond. I'm 28, five kids, married, uh, on my own home and I'm a professional triathlete. I specialize in the Ironman full distance, which is 3.8 K C swim, 180 K on the bike and a full marathon at the end. So there, th that's the race I love. That's my, that's my thing, you know, then full Ironman races is what I, I do triathlon for. That's who I am. I'd love to just get a sense of how you're doing at the moment. <clears throat> I, like this is nothing. To be honest with you, and I'm not saying that in a smart way, like, but like, I don't know what everyone's giving out, but with all due respect, don't worry me language, fuck all of it. Like, we have enough to live, do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I was locked up, and I know what it's like to live in an 8x4 cell, and uh, all those guys now have 5k, <laughs> you know, we've nothing to be giving out about. But look, we have the necessities, we have a family, we have food, and you know. I mean, one year without holidays or two years without holidays or certain other things. I mean, it's not the end of the world, you know. You just take it day by day. And just, you know, for me, the main thing is to try and keep the mind active. And not even to try and, like, there's other people out there like music or whatever their passion is. Just continue your passion. Just do what you do. I'd love to get a bit more of an insight of where your passion came from. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know how far you want me to go back, like, but... As, as far as you're comfortable with, like, honestly, this is your interview. I mean, I grew up in Darndale and Kulak. And I uh, grew up in a dysfunctional family. And that's been nice about it. <clears throat> I was sent to school with no food, no breakfast, no lunch. Uh, I, I was a bed when I was a kid. I was never washed. I was sent to school to smell. So I had that... Um, anxiety, going to school, smell of piss off me. I remember like I never wanted to sit beside pee because of that. And I sort of, I, even now I'm a lone wolf a little bit, <laughs> you know, but I don't know where it comes from, but it could be in that. But uh, you know, even the likes of that, my confidence was always knocked. Um, but I loved football. Football was me out there. Uh, I really loved it. Like. And even though all the stuff that was going on in the home, I still managed to become really good at, at football. At the age of 15, a scout came to watch me and he invited me over to, to do, do a trial in Dunfermline in Scotland, which I took, went over, got off the flight. Um, I was on the bench for the under 16s. They were playing fall kick, they were losing 3 1, and I come off the bench, scored two goals, and laid up the winner. We won 4 3. I was offered a YTS scholarship with Dunfermline, which I took. Was living as a professional soccer player, living my dream, and uh, that was taken away from me. I got a call from home saying my father had committed a crime in Kilock. <clears throat> he had he had been given a prison sentence for that, so he was straight away caught, put into prison. My mother was a heavy drinker, and I had five other brothers and sisters at home. I got a flight from Dunfermline back to Dublin, and little did I know when I got off the flight. I was going into a deep, dark hole. At that time, I didn't know. Obviously, I know now, but uh, when I got back to the house, I was boarded up. My mother was drinking alcohol with people off the road. The kids were just in the house, like, sad. It was a sad existence. Like, I went from being a professional soccer player to coming to a house that was broke up. My mother was drunk, and, oh, it was a disaster, like, disaster. Anyway... I had a decision to make, I had to go back and pursue my career as a soccer player or 
stay in the shit with everyone else and try and become a father figure, which is the road I took. So I had two options. Uh, one option was to join a criminal gang uh, to make money to put food on the table. And the other one was to join a criminal gang for protection because we were under threat from the family my father had committed a crime against. So I done both. I joined the criminal gang uh, for protection and to put food on the table. Uh, that's very low control because I had a lot of resentment towards adults because all adults let me down. Uh, and I'd lost my me, me career to become a professional footballer. So I had loads and loads of negative resentment. I hated everyone. And then I took drugs to talk about my problems because I was really quiet and most men are. So I found when I took drugs, I, I talked, uh, which I'd done regularly because it felt good to talk. I just wouldn't do it when I was sober. Right. But even after that, I still wanted to commit suicide. I've contemplated it lots of times. In 2013, I got a prison sentence in Mount Joy for uh, two years. Served me time in Mount Joy um, and then finished it off in Shelton Abbey, not in prison. I remember sitting in this prison cell and my life flashed in front of me. I remember seeing myself as a little kid being a professional footballer. And all of a sudden, my life was like, where's my life gone? I'm like 34 at this stage, you know. Jeez, my life is gone. Like, I'm never going to amount to nothing. That's what I thought. So I'll never amount to anything now. Like, that's it. I'm in prison. Never going to get a job because of a conviction. No one's going to look at me in the same light anymore. So I sort of came up a little bit in that sense. And when I got out, I started doing the same thing that I was doing. My son, Ross, was due in October 2016. Uh, first boy, because I had four girls and I was looking for the boy. <laughs> he was the first boy. And uh, I was away with my friend on holiday and he was chatting about him and his little son about going camping and all other little things, which was lovely. And then my friend actually died from a drug overdose about two or three weeks later. And I remember sitting in the funeral home. So I'm sitting there. I was actually standing at that time. And some walked into the coffin and I'm sitting, standing there. And then I went to my knees and put my head in my hands. And I said, what the fuck am I doing all this for? Like, what's this about? People that were connected to a criminal gang think that doing it for the family to provide. But it's absolute bullshit because you're not doing anything. You're, you're, causing, you're causing problems within the family. Like, like this kid now, it's going to be affected for the rest of his life. His father is dead because we are selfish by taking drugs or by selling drugs or by being connected to a criminal gang, which is a high risk, let's face it. When that happened, I just, that was it, I was done. I said, how can I now see this picture, what's happening, and continue on doing what I'm doing and possibly do that to my kids one day? Who am I to do that? You know, who gives me the right to make that decision? So that was it, I was done. And I've never done anything since, and that was 2016. Went to watch a friend of mine doing an Ironman in 2016 in October, and uh, I, said, geez, maybe I could do that. Couldn't swim, never on a bike, road bike. Um, but it wasn't about that, it was about the journey and the process and setting new goals and just getting into a different life. So I started my journey of uh, to be a triathlete in 2017. Signed up for an Ironman in August of 2017. It wasn't really about the Ironman because I didn't even know I was going to finish at that stage because it was only like seven months away or something. But uh, I just wanted to get fit and healthy and show everything I changed and that was me. That was the way at that time. And then I remember landing in, in Maastricht in Holland on August the 6th uh, for the full Ironman. And I stood there and I just got this aura that had my life back. But um, I just felt that, you know, really good and fit and healthy. I felt I had my life back, to be honest with you. And I remember jumping into the, in, in an Ironman, there's like a buzzer. Every 10 seconds, four people go in, beep, and you jump in, beep. So I'm lining up. And I jump in and there's a big bridge behind me. And when I look back for a stroke, I just start seeing the old self and I'm spooning away at the old self. It was a bit of a weird one. And um, I swim up and I get through the swim down and I do the bike. And then I'm on the run, um, feeling really good. And I'm not suffering. People tell me you'd suffer on the run. It's a full marathon after all that. It's your first time. You're going to be in bits. Well, I didn't suffer. I went looking for it. I was like, suffering? This isn't, this isn't suffering. So I had the ability to suffer because I'd suffered as a kid so much and through all them years that the mind was already 
my mind was already strong. This wasn't suffering. Sports for, to me is not suffering. This is a good pain. The only confidence has been gone because the soccer team has been taken away me and everyone let me down. So my inner confidence and belief was gone. But when I crossed that finish line, I got part of that back, do you know what I mean? Where I started believing in myself. I was telling people, yeah, I'm going for my pro license. And they wouldn't even engage a conversation with me. You, you see, the thing is, my, my main reason to become a pro was to give me a platform to help people because I've come from prison. So if I become a professional athlete, my message will be so strong for them people to be help them people become better people. I can hear so much care and love in your voice for wanting to help people. Like, why is that so important to you? Because I was let down. No one came for me. So I said, I'm going to come for everyone else. I'm going to show people it can be done. Because when I was in prison, I thought my life was over. And I'm sure there's hundreds of other people who think that. So I said, if I do this, I can go back and tell them, your life's not over because I've done it. So there's no excuse, do you know what I mean? So that was my why, and that's why I trained so hard. In the Norman, they have this red carpet. It's about 100 metres long. It's a red carpet. And each side of the red carpet is like 10 people deep shouting, right? And then you have to finish line. So I got onto the red carpet. And if you can imagine this, my family visit me in prison, my kids and wife. And my family is now on this red carpet at this barrier with an island flag. And I'm running down it to become an Irish professional triathlete. I mean, like it's hard to explain that feeling um, to anyone because I don't think I could explain how proud I was, how proud they were uh, for that to change so quickly. To hear you speaking and get such an insight into where you've come from in life, you're, mm. you're doing it and you're making such a change. And you're right, like there's so many people out there that don't know that change exists and don't know what's possible but you're proving that it's possible and like there's literally so much you said there that I'm like I want to I want to know more about it but one thing that stood out was you said before that you know yeah you had to use drugs to talk about how you're doing but now you've done the 360 and you're like I want to help people I want them to know that you know it's okay to talk are you getting that that in your life anywhere now like being able to chat and talk about how you're doing without the drugs I've gone to council. I, I went to, I've been going to council for two years now. Every week I go to council. I had a lot of inherited bad traits. And what I done was I, I, I recognised this and I went to council to go through each and every one of them and rectified all my bad traits and I've, I've changed them in order to give my kids good traits. Because if I don't do that, I'm just going to forward them on to them. So that's why I went and got council to change myself in order to change my kids. Because it's their responsibility as parents to step up and show the kids the new way and a better way than what we've been shown, if you've been shown a bad way. Because the ability a human has to, to overcome dreams is phenomenal. And don't care what anyone else says. It's not their dream. Fuck them. <laughs> I don't give a shit what you think. It's not your dream, do you know? But it took me a few years to become that person. Like, I am. Yeah. And I have one more question for you, and it's up to your own interpretation. But what's your why? Uh, my why, it's easy. It's simple. It's to change my generation. So I think it's so important to know where you came from. And if, it's, if, it's, if you didn't enjoy it, and you didn't like where you, how you were brought up, um, excuse me language but your responsibility to fucking change it and don't be accepted I don't know how people can grow up with a mother and father and not like it and then continue that on with their kids I mean where does that make sense in your head so for me it's to change the generation take them reins be a man or a woman whatever and say I'm going to change this generation it's my turn I'm on the, in the driver's seat here and I'm going to change all the traits that I've grown up in and I'm going to make myself better because it starts with you as a parent. Yeah. Like people are blaming the government about there's not enough this, not enough that. I know you agree with that, right? But you can't do that if you're not doing enough at your own home. The inspiration starts in the home. The parents have to set the example. This is what we do. This is how we do it. Look at mom, look at dad, we're setting goals. The kids pick up on that. Yeah. So it's our responsibility to start at home, change the generation and make it a better place for the kids coming behind us. So step up as parents. For me, that's my word.